in Berlin, the capital that once threatened to deliver the final solution. Jewish life and culture is making a steady, defiant and symbolic return. <laughs> but it's a renaissance tinged with apprehension, guilt, resentment and violence. I think that this new Germany has a moral responsibility towards Jews because of having killed six million of them. We have no responsibility for this. We can't be in collective fault. The time is over and I think that Germany has enough an reparationsleistungen and wiedergutmachungen in the last 50 years gezahlt hat and irgendwann muss damit Schluss sein. The 21st century could provide an opportunity for the country to finally break from its past. But the behaviour of some suggests it is still shackled to the stains it left on the 20th. Menschen wurden schon immer schlecht behandelt. Und warum wurden sie schlecht behandelt? Weil es ist minderwertig, die sind halt nur für Sklaverei zu, zu haben oder ich weiß nicht, ich selber habe Hass gegen die. Also. After more than a decade of reconstruction, the confident facade of a new republic is slowly emerging. The return of German political power to Berlin has already cost billions, and the work still has a long way to go. But even here, among all the concrete aspirations of a new nation, the past is never far away. We are a unified country again, and many people ask, of course, is this the beginning of a Fourth Reich? I wouldn't say so. I think we have a new situation, but I think we have to understand, particularly here in Germany, that people all, all around us, in Europe and elsewhere in the world, are concerned about the new Germany, and therefore today it's even more necessary uh, to deal with the past uh, than it was during the good old days of the old Bond Republic uh, before 1989, when Germany was divided. And evidence of that constant debate is impossible to ignore. In the former no-man's land that surrounded the wall, the spot where Adolf Hitler spent his last days in his bunker contemplating defeat, has been set aside for the biggest Jewish memorial of them all. This site will be filled with more than 2,000 gravestone-like pillars, a quiet few acres of reflection in the middle of a modern, dynamic new capital. Those who are 30 years old today don't know what their grandparents did during the Nazi time. The grandparents haven't talked about it. They've kept silent about it. But not only kept silent, they've made a taboo of it. So that the grandchildren think the Holocaust has nothing to do with them. And they can't imagine that their grandparents had anything to do with it. But I mean, the Nazis didn't come from Mars, and uh, they were the grandparents of today's German grandchildren. Salome Genin fled Berlin for Australia with her family in 1939. She returned in the 50s, eventually settling in East Berlin, in the area that used to be the old Jewish quarter of the city. Here we have in front of us the lawn and a stone. On this lawn, there was the first Jewish old people's home, mm. which the Gestapo took over and turned into a deportation center. Salomea was initially drawn back to Berlin by her politics, not her religion. She came to the East as a committed communist. But as her idealism crumbled over the decades, her cultural and religious rediscovery became an important statement for her and an important symbol of survival for Jews in general. You know, uh, I live around the corner here, and for about one and a half years, we had uh, 
a service in my living room every three weeks. And when we sang the religious songs, I was very happy to open the window and let the songs go out so that everybody knew here there is a religious serving, service taking place. Here in this area where they tried to kill them all. That was our triumph. <laughs> Today, the songs have moved from the living room to the stage. Salomea's life story has become one of the attractions of a visit to Berlin's old Jewish quarter. What are you here, brüllte er. Weißt du nicht, dass Juden auf der Straße heute nicht zu suchen haben? I want to help people to learn to understand what went on. Apart from the fact, I mean, I was traumatized in this country as a child, and there's still trauma in me, and this is one way I have of coping with it. Today, Jews are being drawn back to Germany by the opportunity it offers for a new life and a chance to reconnect with their heritage. The population has reached 100,000 for the first time since the Holocaust, still a long way short of the community of 500,000 that lived here before the war. <laughs> Well over half of them are from the former Soviet Union, like Anna and Sayera Makatov, taking advantage of Germany's offer of an open door to Europe. I think I'm in a state of instability. That's why, in Azerbaijan, was for me so difficult. I have studied and worked hard, but it was so unsure. I wanted to do a real study, do a film. Many people want to go further. And there are plenty more who are keen to follow the Makatov's good fortune. Liebe Freunde, liebe Gäste, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, herzlich willkommen, Shalom Aleichem. Es ist mir eine besondere 5,000 Jewish families receive permanent visas every year now. Among immigrants, they occupy a special privileged position. They receive full work permits, residence permits, full welfare benefits, a place to live, free schooling for children, and German lessons. <laughs> But the open door for immigrants has provided an opportunity of a different sort for some. Die Gedanken sind frei, wer kann sie erwarten? Sie fliehen vorbei wie nächtliche Schatten. Kein Mensch kann sie wissen, kein Reger erschließen, es bleibe dabei. Udo Fucht is the leader of the far-right German Nationalist Party, the NPD. His thoughts might be free, but they trouble the government. In the past few years, Fucht has cleverly tapped the resentment and disillusionment felt by many young people in the East. Denn keiner, keine, kein Skinhead bleibt ein Leben lang Skinhead oder bleibt Glatze. Es gibt also auch Leute dabei, die Hirn haben. Es gibt nicht nur die Bierdosen Nazis und diese Leute, die Hirn haben, die versuchen wir anzusprechen. Denn es wäre ja eine Katastrophe, wenn wir in Deutschland 10.000 Jugendliche haben, die auf der Aufnäher tragen, ich bin stolz, ein Deutscher zu sein, und wir diese Menschen da nicht versuchen anzusprechen. 
For Udo Vught, the government's campaign to ban his party has been a welcome attack. The publicity has attracted hundreds of new members and thousands of inquiries from interested people. The NPD now finds itself at the centre of a national debate about the merits of restricting some freedoms to protect core democratic values. Also ich verstehe diese Frage als Argument, dass man, wenn man über das Verbot einer Partei diskutiert oder es in Erwägung zieht, so etwas wie eine Märtyrerrolle oder eine anziehende Rolle auf manche Leute damit schaffen kann, dass sie sagen, jetzt erst recht, jetzt schließe ich mich dieser Partei an. Aber wenn man das eine gegen das andere abwägt, meine ich, die Vorteile einer offensiven Diskussion über ein Verbot überwiegen die Gefahren. Aber wie gesagt, es darf nur ein Schritt unter anderem sein, denn niemand wird hinterher sagen können, quasi als Alibi, nun haben wir unser Werk getan, wir haben eine rechte Partei verboten und damit ist etwas gegen den Rechtsradikalismus Entscheidendes geschehen. Es muss eingepasst werden in, andere, in ein ganzes Bündel anderer Maßnahmen. Others, though, make more obvious connections between the NPD's brand of extremist nationalism and the alarming increase in neo-Nazi-inspired violence. The West may have colonized the boulevards of the East, but the fashionable boutiques are as alien as ever. For many, there remains what they call a wall in the mind. Many people uh, in the East, especially young people, expected almost everything from reunification. And they are very disappointed today that it did not happen. Unemployment is very high, uh, twice as high as in West Germany. Um, the uh, material expectations may have been fulfilled to some extent, but still there is a kind of, uh, of social discrimination uh, of Easterners in Germany. And so social frustration is very high. The second reason uh, is that, of course, in East Germany, um, in the former GDR, uh, there was not really an intense um, discussion about developments of the past. Uh, they dealt with it from a very strange perspective. They, uh, the, the official position was that the GDR was a new German state, had nothing to do with the past, and therefore was not responsible for it. Alberto Adriano lived in Dessau in the east, a city that, believe it or not, was once one of Germany's leading cultural centers, home to the Bauhaus and artists like Klee and Kandinsky. Before two dictatorships intervened, Dessau inspired creative endeavor. Today, many young people here find their inspiration in the bottle, drugs, or extremist politics. But it's not just Jews that are the focus of the suspicion and resentment felt here. The neo-Nazi hatred is viciously applied to all immigrants. Bereket Hale is an asylum seeker from Eritrea. In some countries, asylum seekers are put behind wire fences to prevent them getting out. Here, the fences are put up to keep others from getting in. They, are, they hate mostly Jewish people in blacks because they are afraid of uh, Jewish people, they think they are intelligent, they work together, uh, they are business people, they, and yes, they are strong, yes. And uh, blacks, uh, they hate you because uh, uh, blacks were in slavery, yes, they were in colony, and all in all, in general, when uh, is why they attack is because they are afraid of foreigners. Dass die Mehrheit der Gesellschaft sich plötzlich über diese Vorgänge, vor allen Dingen auch in Ostdeutschland, aufregt, das ist neu und das ist auch wichtig. Der zentrale Punkt ist, dass junge Leute in Ostdeutschland nicht begriffen haben, dass man mit Ausländern in Frieden leben kann und dass sie sie nicht bedrohen. Und es gibt in Ostdeutschland auch gar nicht viele Ausländer. Das sind die Dinge, die wir jetzt dringend auch durch Aufklärung deutlich machen müssen, dass das Zusammenleben zwischen Menschen deutscher und anderer Herkunft keine größeren Probleme bereitet. In the Reichstag, the past is highlighted. The graffiti of liberating Soviet soldiers has been deliberately left on display. The past rings strongly through the politics of the modern state, and probably always will. Not, I think that's enough. But the irony is, it's the Jews, 
especially those from the former Soviet Union, who seem to be finding it easier to leave the past behind. Gentlemen, what? What in our chariot? How are we Boris Feldman fled from Riga in Latvia as the Soviet Union collapsed. He lost three grandparents to the Nazis in World War II. Now he publishes Russian language newspapers in Berlin. I want to say that Germany is huge, but Germany is not alone in this war, if you have a reason for the death of millions of people who died during the time of the Holocaust. You know how much he did Stalin before his death to prepare to send millions of Jews to Siberia. In Riga, in the spring of 1953, the wagons were already ready, the military vehicles were ready, the Jews were ready, who were sent to Berebidzhan. Everything was ready, only the death of Stalin stopped this process. И это правда, это знают все. Так что... Так, а что все убежали? Молодцы. Germany, he says, is dealing with its past. Stalin's crimes have never been addressed. And Germany today is a land of freedom with a terrible history. И вот те 12 страшных лет, когда здесь у власти был Гитлер, они не могут перечеркнуть вот эту, эти все, это все знание. Поэтому для нас Германия имеет большое будущее. Германия будет, особенно Берлин, будет такой интернациональной столицей новой Европы. И мы для этого многое делаем. Do you think it can happen again? Ну, я думаю, что Германия не может быть стерильна вот этой заразы, которая во всем мире сейчас все равно есть. Она есть и в России. Она есть, не знаю, как в Австралии, но она есть и в Америке, она есть, в общем-то, во Франции. Вот. Я думаю, что мы это переживем как